Okay, so now I just need you to clap one time. <laughs> okay. It's like right there though. It's like no, okay. I'm zoned in. I'm zoned in. I'm zoned. There's nothing there. No, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. All right. I need you to do. I need you to clap one time. Okay. And now don't look at the camera. Okay. Don't look at the camera. Okay, Vlad. So I brought you here today to let you know that we have Chick Fil A for snack attack tonight. That's deep, bro. <laughs> Culver is the perfect place to create conditions for success. I mean, I would say Culver is probably the one place that you can challenge yourself physically, mentally. Culver is a place where character is built and strengths are developed. Scenarios that you're put in with like your peers and best friends and you have to like come together to accomplish one goal. It's a bubble in the middle of nowhere filled with opportunities, with challenges. Very enlightening community, full of wonderful people. It is geared into a way where it encourages growth and encourages you to build relationships with others and grow as a person. It's a very challenging and fast-paced environment that prepares you for future success. In terms of building up their social skills, their academic abilities, their athletic performance, their spirituality, um, their maturity and their self-discipline and time management, all these things together are Culver. Difficult, but worth it. Culver is a special place. I was a terrible roommate my freshman year, and I think that's why I learned. You don't have to be their best friend. You don't have to be their, you know, their buddy. You just have to be their roommate. It's communication. First and foremost, communication. Transparency. Being honest with each other. I'd say it's like accepting each other's differences, accepting that you're going to be living with this person. Doing the little things where you're not bothering your roommate. Communicating, you know, what things kind of bother the other person and then, you know, coming to a compromise with that or just, you know, stopping that behavior. It'd be the best thing to do to, to you know, respect those boundaries and, you know, kind of have a set plan to what you're going to do and how you're going to achieve it. Keeping things easy, especially when you start to butt heads. Just remember that it's not too big of a deal. Like if I'm always going to be messy or whatever, my roommate's not going to like that, but it would be equally the same if they were messy. Making your bed, throwing out the trash can, doing your side of the shoe line, because if you miss like your part of the room, then that kind of like brings up problems because it not only affects you, I mean, you have a roommate living with you, so now it affects both of you guys. I definitely say Quig. He, he would talk to me almost every day, checking on me, uh, how I was doing. Gage Gessner, a uh, good friend. A uh, guy of strong, strong integrity and strong character. Bam Tullis, who graduated last year, just he'd be there for me, helping like sympathize, you know, help me get through, you know, my struggles. My favorite leader was Miles Muth. You know, ever since I came into Culver, he was just a great example of a leader, and I wanted to be just like him. And I wish I told him that. For me, I think the best leader was Michael John Ficarra, and I think it's purely, you know, how he carried himself and how he was able to embody what Culver really is. I think Kevin Zhu last year. I feel he just kind of commanded everyone's respect. He didn't, he wasn't power hungry. You know, he was open, he communicated well. Soriketti, like what differentiates him from other unit leaders is that he can be warm, but then he can also be very strict and very stern when he has to be. It's gotta be Carlos, Fimbres. I came in as a new cadet with him. He was a freshman from Mexico. Like he barely spoke any English, it seemed. And then he played basketball with me freshman year. So we got super close. And then I just saw him like exceed all the expectations and rise to become the regimental man. 
you want one or you want a thousand? Because I can give you a thousand times that Mr. Most told me not to do something and I've done it and it turned out wrong. So probably buying into the system. I, I struggled for that for like about two years. I think that lesson is that it's better to be consistently good than occasionally great. At the start, I was like kind of that person that was, you know, wanting to go home and it was hard here. But you were always, you kept telling me it's going to get better. And I don't know if I trusted that. But then as it started to go on, things started to get so much easier and more of a routine and time was flying. You and my operations sergeant telling me to stick with the process and that everything will get better um, is something that I am very appreciative of because if it wasn't for you guys, then I probably wouldn't be here doing this interview. It took me a little longer than what you recommended, which to like go out right away and meet people. I just wish I would have realized sooner to go out there, put myself out there, be myself, but I'm truly grateful to have figured that out now and continue to live through that through the end of this year. When you don't try and when you make a fool of yourself, people don't take you seriously. And I did that as my first impression when I came here and that left a really negative lasting impact that didn't change until my junior, late sophomore, junior year. You tried teaching us that, you know, leadership among peers is, is a lot more difficult than we make it out to be. And, and the key to that is probably building good relationships. So I think that's something that's become more apparent as I've been at Culver. Patience. My dad always used to say you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. I think that if you are able to, you know, talk to somebody and that they can sense that you're caring about them and they can sense that you want the best for them and then you double check and you can help them achieve that goal they'll be more prone and willing to do so because you took the time out of your day and you you showed that you cared for them rather than you know asking them to do something and then expecting it to be done my freshman and sophomore year i was um, kind of a, a recluse i'd say the one sole part that I was missing was this is a place that you are going to make unforgettable connections with. And I, I didn't really understand that, even though people kept telling me, like, you're going to make lifelong connections with people here. Little basic things that you have to do every single day, and it's better to just do it correctly every single day so you get in the habit of doing it. But it also grows into other things like note taking or schoolwork or like hockey. It just builds that discipline to where you're doing little things and because you're doing those little things, you could start like, you have a foundation, and then you could just keep building off of that. I think it's definitely being a part of the community service uh, council, a group of six seniors that worked to try to rekindle the uh, community service club because of COVID, it kind of died down. Being promoted to officer, I'm very grateful that the past leaders and seniors have put their faith and trust in me to lead this unit as an officer. Passing boards, then you private, then you know, then you move up, team leader, and then all the way from team leader up to platoon sergeant where I am now. That was definitely rewarding for me, giving an opportunity to have a position in the unit and, you know, showcase what you know what I can do. When I was regimental supply, it was the most rewarding because, you know, you're kind of a backbone in that sense for the regiment and for units when you're supplying. So doing that is extremely important. Regimental operations officer was the most rewarding because it was just kind of the, the culmination of my entire time here at Culver. Like right now is kind of my most rewarding because I'm able to be more involved. The most rewarding because I get to see some of like the inner workings behind the scenes sort of stuff. Being a squad leader, I had a smaller group of people that I was in charge of and um, it really prepared me for now being a platoon leader. Doing a senior position when I was a junior because of the amount of seniors that we had last year, we didn't have enough guys to fulfill roles and I was blessed to be chosen to fulfill one of those positions which meant I had more responsibilities and more duties more people to lead within the unit. My sophomore year becoming a team leader I didn't really know what I wanted to do for the leadership I didn't I honestly didn't even know if I wanted to be a part of it but when I met those first two freshmen tried helping them along their way being their older brother per se it made me realize that if I can help other people maybe have a better time here than I did, or just in general have a better time, then that's, that's what I want to do. For me, the most rewarding leadership task would have to be my time as regimental diversity officer. It was really about elevating this position to something new and something bigger. I think the culmination of that really was this year's 
uh, MLK Day, which I was very pleased with. Having been one of the main planners throughout that process and seeing it be such a big success, that was, um, I think, one of the best experiences I've had in, in trying to bring an impact to Culver. I was operations sergeant my, my junior year, and that was a big step up for me, leadership-wise. But I think you know the thing that tops it off is is being in control of the unit. You know we have 52 guys, 53 guys that you know I'm essentially responsible for, and the well-being and, and daily operations of the unit. And I think that it's been the most meaningful, in a sense. I think one of the most rewarding tasks is being unit commander. Uh, and I'd say that because I think all the relationships that you've built are very meaningful. I mean, just being able to go outside your room and go into any room in the whole unit is very rewarding. Having a conversation, eating lunch, uh, sitting with new cadets, just knowing everyone's story is very rewarding. And I mean, it really makes you a very empathetic leader because you know them and you know why they're here. It, it does prepare you very well for life beyond Culver. Being Branch Insignia Boards Officer this year, or Operations Sergeant last year, and both for very similar reasons. Seeing like the new cadets come in and being, you know, completely different and, you know, not really adapted to the Culver life. But then, you know, through my role and through my leadership, seeing them develop into, you know, active citizens at Culver, you know, with the values that we're trying to instill upon them so that they can be successful leaders in the unit. I'd say that was one of the most rewarding things. I have to say my first football game this season. Playing that first game in front of everybody here at home, very exciting. We're able to get a win and it kind of reminded me like, this is where I belong. Both of the sectionals and swimming. Passing boards, you know, I still remember the moment today, hugging everyone in that room. My first Spirit Games. Spirit Games really made me see how connected Culver is. We have to be the mud run. Although it was freezing cold, I really enjoyed running in the mud with my, my brothers, my nuclear brothers, my now family. Even though I lost a pair of one shoe from my favorite pair of shoes, it's still my, the most memorable thing at Culver. My time on the rowing team here, I think it's where I've a lot of, made a lot of my friends. Uh, one that sticks out to me in particular is the spring training trip we went on last year to Florida. Uh, it was just a week with the team in Florida and we, we had a great time. A vivid memory I have is we had a morning practice at like 6.30 in the morning, like nobody else is awake, it's just us out there. And you know, on the water, it's so peaceful. And then, you know, like I just remember being so happy and just constantly smiling that whole time. Passing boards, definitely. I mean, I remember going down, then key our op sarge leading us down to uh, Legion. It was really a moment that I'll never forget. I just remember the smile on my face after answering those 10 questions and getting to write my name in that book. I remember looking back and I saw my brother's name. And I just thought, you know, how much it meant to me that our, both of our names are in that book. Initiation ceremony they had, like first day new cadet. We were all gathered at the Naval Building and they had like the drums, they had all the officers do like salute or whatever. And that just like, I remember coming here, I was like, okay, we're gonna have a military school and probably like the next day they'll teach us some stuff. But when we marched over there, it was all fun and games and we stopped there and they start giving like the sort of speech and they start like doing the ceremony, it just kind of like, it really hit differently in a way it was like, okay, this is serious and we're going to start now. Definitely I've become more personable, more just like prepared for any challenge that comes my way pretty much. For me, I learned not only a lot about the school, but a lot about myself and, you know, take responsibility for all my actions. You know, my freshman year, I was kind of like that turtle stuck in his shell. Like, I think I've really just found my voice and, you know, my style of leadership and who I, you know, want to be. I think I've developed grit. I've developed self-reliance. I just don't rely on my parents anymore as I used to when I was at home. I came in here not knowing anything really about leadership or, you know, time management or discipline. It only creates good habits in life. I've definitely broken, like, the shed that I was, like, brought into here at Culver. Uh, and I became more of an active like communicator and like a leader. Before I came here, I was a little bit more introverted, but I'm starting to like come out more and sort of finding a bit more of myself and what I want to do. Being being more personable and be, being able to you know have better interactions with people, I think, is something from here. I really changed in a, in a sense of what my values are. I now one of my biggest values, um, especially of leadership, and this is what I think leadership is all about, is caring about those you lead. 
I came in here as like a 15 year old freshman, super young, not really sure on how to live on my own. And then I, I'm surrounded by a bunch of kids that are in the same scenario and it's just a great environment to be in. Culver teaches you how to work hard and the necessity to work hard. Classes, especially this year, have been very challenging and I've had to organize my time. Even with our very regimented schedule with CQ and all that, there's still sometimes you have to work around that depending on your schedule. So it really teaches you the necessity for organization and um, hard work, communicating with your teachers and peers in your classes. So obviously when I came here, I wasn't all that thrilled. Definitely not comfortable at all. This was a completely new environment. The leadership and the, the energy, passion, everyone to get better every single day, it was completely unlike anything I've ever seen before. I believe I've gained a lot of confidence, a lot of individuality, and just a lot of new perspectives. I'm just, I feel much better now going into the rest of my life. I think watching those videos that you sent the summer before coming, sophomore year, uh, my mom always said, make sure you watch those videos that Mr. Mo made. I think they're gonna be helpful for you. And of course, I never did them. I do wish I watched those videos that you made because they would have been extremely helpful. Uh, just respecting everyone and doing what you're supposed to be told and then a little bit more will set you up for success. They're going to teach you a lot of stuff and you might not get it immediately, but it's okay to make mistakes. It's not anything to be intimidated of, but it's a, it's a learning process that'll change you for the better. You know, my overall advice is just, you know, come to Culver and uh, really experience, you know, the, the Culver process. Um, it, it's going to work out for you. Coming in with an open mind, embracing the military system, and may, putting your best foot forward in everything that you do uh, is something that I would do right away when I get here. When I first came here, I was so hyper-focused on, like, my performance and say, like, if you want to call it, like, stats, instead of maybe going out, um, you know, hanging out with people. So I just wish maybe... I found that right balance and was more open-minded with how my experience was going to be here. I don't know if I would change anything because I, I, I've had brothers go here, my dad went here, so I kind of knew what to expect, but I still also had that area where I didn't know what to expect. So I feel like the way that it all like bombarded me at the start, it, it really changed me and put a mood in my mind that got me where I am today. Take the new cadet system more seriously. Uh, when I first came here, I, I didn't like the military. I, if I took it more seriously, I'd take a lot more from it, and I regret not doing so. And can you remind me again, where are you going now for college? The Air Force Academy. <laughs> I think the biggest thing is that we just respect each other and we all are willing to maintain a working professional relationship with one another. We're always there for each other too, which is another important thing. It seems like we're very connected, very bonded as a senior class. You know, we have a bunch of guys with strong character and strong values and everything, and that's led to a lot of our success. We can depend on each other for anything, whether that's homework advice, friend advice, or just needing a person there. I think it's because we were new cadets during COVID. It really just unity through adversity. If one guy is down, another comes and picks him up. You know, what you did this make, for example, I feel like it was really important and you made it so you gave other people opportunities in the unit. When we come together in the unit, we're able to find our commonality, being proud members of Company C and we're able to really get along and succeed together. We just seem more friendly or more like into the unit as a whole rather than just like senior class. And I think that, you know, everybody's on the same page uh, in regards to achieving a specific goal whether that be military, academically, or athletically. And I think that, you know, we use those characteristics to bond properly with each other. But then also I'd say it had, kind of has a bit to do with the people that came before us, like the seniors my freshman year, you know, what they passed down to us, like when we saw their care for the performance of the unit, just that, you know, we have a deep care for the unit and for each other, and that, you know, helps us to, you know, rally against each other and, you know, build ourselves up. I think, I think our past seniors and all the people that I've been led that have been leaders to me, I think we've all learned from them. We've all adapted their, their leading style and implemented it every single year. Even the newer kids that have came in through like sophomore year and junior year, they've also exceeded as leaders. Like we have some two year seniors that are lieutenants and like those are always great to see because it shows that the leadership is shared. And Thank you, Mom, Dad, Sam, 
I thank you for, first of all, sending me to this place. This is probably like the best experience that's probably ever happened to me. And had experiences that not many people around the world can have. Thank you for listening all the times you've had to like help me get through something. I don't know like if I can say any more other than thank you. Thank you, my whole family, for sending me here. I feel like it gave me a great opportunity, showcased my talent and all my skills. It all set me up for, you know, going to something great and doing great in the future. Mama, Baba, I can't... I Mom, Dad, Nate, Paige, Mo, the love that you guys have given me and the sacrifices you guys have made have impacted me in a way that I can't even describe. That love, that selflessness, that caring, that sense of, you know, this is my son, this is my brother, you know, I'm going to do everything I can to see him succeed. And the, the willingness to listen, the willingness to care, and the willingness to not give up on me means the world. I just can't say thank you enough because I love you guys. Uh, i just like to say thank you. I've had a lot of opportunities here that, you know, I would have never had anywhere else. And, you know, I mean, my dad and my mom, they've always been here for me and they want me to succeed. I don't know what I'd be doing without you guys. Mom and dad, I want to say I love you. And I want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to come to this amazing school. It will be really hard to leave here even after just two years. It was really hard to leave you guys at the beginning to come here. I hope that I was able to make you guys proud and I'm able to continue to make you guys proud. But I just want to say thank you for working so hard to send me here, always being there for me whenever I need and excited to see me when I do get to come home. So just thank you guys so much for giving me this opportunity. I love you guys. I want to say thank you for letting me come here. It's been an amazing experience and I've met a lot of cool people and I'm just really happy I've come here. So thank you for letting me come here and I hope you all have a great day. I just want to say thank you, mom. Thank you, dad. I'm just very grateful to have gone through this experience, met these people, and it really changed me for the better. And I really wasn't expecting me to become this much of a better person than my past self. And I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Thank you, mom and dad. I just want to say I am very, very appreciative of this opportunity that you've given me. I think I've grown a lot. I'm so excited to show you how I've grown and I just wanted to tell you that I won't waste this opportunity. Thank you for this opportunity. As I know it wasn't easy. I know I gave you guys a hard time. Being, being here for four years was just perfect. It, it got me to the point where I was able to get to where I am today. And I feel like if I was a year cut short, I, I wouldn't be able to make it. Thank you, and I know it wasn't hard, and thank you for everything you've done. Mom, Dad, Daria, thank you for all the sacrifices you've made for me to be here. It, it really means a lot. Thank you. <laughs> That's it. <sighs> you know, thank you, Mom, for telling me about this amazing place. I know that it wasn't the easiest thing to, you know, see me leave, but I know you're happy for me to come here. Dad. Thank you for supporting my, you know, dream of, you know, hopefully becoming an officer in the army. I know that you're, you really backed me on that and you're kind of almost surprised when I came up with that idea to you. You know, I just want to say thank you both for, you know, making the sacrifices to, you know, allow me to come here. Maybe it wasn't super easy to, you know, get the money. Thank you. Thank you for everything that you've done for me um, in my childhood and early teenage years. Thank you for believing in me and sending me to Culver even if I had second thoughts. I am truly blessed and thankful for all that you've done for me, getting me to where I am today and I couldn't have done it without you guys. Thank you, I love you. Mom, Dad, Lestia, Isabella, Nick, I just wanted to say thank you. This is probably the best opportunity that I've ever gotten. I can personally see a, a gain in, in my character and you know all the things that I've become and putting me here was the best possible situation that you guys could have done for me. Thank you and I love you guys. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity for coming here. 
I think I've changed a lot here at Culver and I really appreciate all of the effort in order to send me here. I mean, it's something that I would not change uh, for anything in the world. Uh, and I think that it's really, really worth it that I've been sent here uh, and all the time that I've spent here. So thank you. Hey kid, don't ever let them get inside your head. They'll tell you what to do in life instead of everything you know that you could get. Don't let them guide your life towards regret. I'll fight for what I love with every breath. My past is filled with things I won't forget. I use them all to push me to my best. So treat the worst of times just like a test. If only I could go back in time I'd tell myself that everything will end up alright Just push yourself, test yourself, figure out what you like and Find your limits, don't be rigid, always work towards a prime Surround yourself with open minds, people can change your life A few friends with intent can help you feel alive I've been doing fine, I'm not wasting any more time I live for the fight and the climb And I think that the pain that's deep inside is what defines So I won't give up, I'm gonna make it to the top I don't care what's in my way, I swear I'm never gonna stop I could fall flat on my face and I swear I won't get back up Cause I don't deserve a thing and the road ahead is tough They'll try to kick you while you're down They wanna rise up while you drown They wanna fill your head with doubt They're silently scared that you'll figure it out I'll make it look like I'm losing Won't bother hiding my 